Too smooth that mud talking and have your ass in a wreck. You sign your check. Pussy better do what he says. We shutting down show. Ain't gotta put no price in your head. Man, I'm coming for your tongue for all that shit that you said. Gonna make the profiles boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. What it is. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is like I do indubitably every day. And then I'm going to tell you exactly what it ain't. What it ain't is bullshit. What it is is realness. Real talk, real life by a real one, real stories. Um, and as you can tell by that thumbnail, we're going to talk about a young lady. Um, I say young lady and not young woman because she never got to grow up to be a woman. Um, she, was, she did childish antics. She did childish things. And she lived a childish life. And for that, she is no longer with us. Rest in peace to one Brenda Paz. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard this story. If you haven't heard this story, sit back, relax, and let the rhymes tax maintain MCs well, the double E max, right? I'm about to get into it. I'm a profile one, Brenda Paz, and basically her life story and what she went through up into the point of her demise and what led into that. You know, what led into that was gangs. You know, she was gang related, Vatos. She was actually from a well known organization, MS 13. Okay, now this young chick was born in Honduras, Honduras, Central America, right? Central America, and of course, just like many other people, their parents brought them over to the United States to live a better life, to live a more prosperous life. So I was scared to get the money, the bolsita, saca la bolsita, everyone's chasing that bag. And of course, there's a lot of persecution, a lot of oppression going on in Honduras, just like El Salvador, and the gangs are rampant there. So to get away from the guerrilla warfare and the gang violence that was happening, because the MS-13, the Mara 18, and several other gangas of El Salvadorian flavor, Central American flavor, Honduran, Guatemalan, whatever the case may be, they're out there. And they're out there oppressing the people, their own gente, right? So these people wanted to get the hell away from there. So her parents brought her to Los Angeles. Okay, so she grew up as a youngster in Los Angeles. And of course, it was very poverty stricken where she grew up in the barrio and she came from a broken home her father was not there she was struggling with just her mother and so on and so forth it seems like it's every chicano or every latino's life not everybody but for the most part we've all went through it where it's a broken home and it's only a one-parent home so i'm scared there's nothing but rats and roaches and shy approaches yes the cucarachas are real so anyway she's doing her thing and uh and for no other reason she finds herself getting caught up in gang in a gang mix now of course the neighborhood that she moved into was pr prominently Central Americans. So being Central American, we all know that they gravitate towards one gang, one predominant gang, which is MS-13, Mara Sabatrucha. So of course she started to hang around with these characters. She started to hang around with this organization and she actually got jumped into the gang. Now when a woman, a young child, a girl is jumped into a gang, usually when a woman's put in on the gang, she's ran in, okay? Basically trained in, she's ran through one time for a mind. That's her initiation, or there's several other processes that they could go in to be initiated. But she didn't want to be initiated like that. Charlie, Brenda Paz was not going out like that. She wanted to be considered a homeboy, not a homegirl, but a homeboy. Now, I've had a couple of those in my barrio, not basically from my barrio, but ones that we consider not only homegirls, but homeboys. A righteous individuals that were down for the cause just like any old, any old homeboy. Just because they wasn't a man doesn't mean they couldn't squeeze fast, right? So she, she initially gets brought into the gang and gets jumped in for 13 seconds by men, by grown men. And, um, and she starts to maintain. She starts to become well known within the group, within her gang, within her organization. And of course, just like any other female, she starts to meet guys within the gang and starts to date them. Now she's very young, but you gotta understand a lot of these individuals, they come from a land where age ain't nothing but a number. Now, of course, in the United States, we don't get down like that. We frown upon that. I know I do, especially. Um, I ain't trying to see no young child with a grown man. But at the same time, this was what she was into. Um, she had her body. She was trying to work it, right? So, of course, being a gang member, um, she's partying. She's kicking it. She's living that lifestyle. And MS is different, okay? Their whole focal point is to become the most predominant and strongest Latino gang in the world. Okay, the such it's like pink in the brain. They're trying to take over the world. What those? These people are not just out there to gangbang or out there for the notoriety of their neighborhood. They're a global organization with over fifty thousand members that stretch all the way from the United States, of course, to Central America, and it's a very well-known gang. Okay, very treacherous and dangerous, dangerous gang. Now I've touched upon MS-13 several times in the past, and I will continue to as the world goes. Right, um, but Brenda Paz. She was living that lifestyle right there in, in Los Angeles. And she met a guy who was actually the leader of her little gang. And so they felt that if for no other reason, they should move to Virginia. Now, Virginia, of course, is, lo of course, is located on the East Coast. 
But like I said, MS-13 has strongholds in every different state, man. These Vatos have big strongholds in Los Angeles, big strongholds in Texas, big strongholds in Washington, D.C., Virginia, so on and so forth. New York City, stand up. These Vatos are everywhere. Like I said, it's a global gang. It's not necessarily considered a gang. It's considered an organization with different clicas. And they have different rules and regulations than any other uh, Latino gang, you know. We on the West Coast, Norteños and Sureños, are up under the umbrellas of who we're up under. I'm not going to speak on that. And you know how we function, man. We're controlling prisons, the streets. Not so much, but on the streets, motherfuckers will get it if you come into the wrong neighborhood. That's just how it is. But the MS considers everything theirs, man. So what they try to do is they try to go into territories by force, and take it by strong arming, you know, using machetes y todo. Oh my, this is how they get down. Anyways, Brenda Paz was with the mix. And like I said, she was with a leader. So she was pretty ingrained, meaning that she had a lot of information on a lot of different cases that had happened over the years. Well, somewhere around the year 2002, what had happened is she got her, found herself involved in a murder, allegedly, right? To which she didn't act upon uh, the aggressor in the murder, but she was there and visualized it, seen it. She witnessed it. So she felt that for no other reason, man, everything was going to come crumbling down around her. So that's because she said, fuck that. You want those are going to tell on me, so I'm going to go ahead and get them first. And she decided that if for no other reason, she should walk in to the federal department of whatever they have. I can't call it. I've never been there. Um, and decided to spill the beans. She decided to start working with the federal government and become a confidential informant. Now, of course, in the gang underworld, this you cannot do. This, if you do, is an automatic death warrant if it is found out. But she wasn't aware of that. She was aware that she couldn't be a snitch or labeled a rat or things of that nature. But she wasn't aware the repercussions were going to be that vicious if they found out. Now, of course, a lot of people um, take different approaches to people telling, you know, some people are not tripping on it. Hey, they told on them, they tell on me, like, I'm tripping, right? Some people don't play, man. It's no jokey joke to them. And they say, fuck it. If they told, they told, and bam, it's on and cracking. Now, these vatos live by a creed. They also rock three dots. They also got tres puntos, just like the Sureños and Los. Pero theirs are not tres puntos. It's not mi vida loca. Theirs is treacherous. Theirs means jail, uh, uh, death, or getting hurt real bad, or the hospital, right? That's what the three dots mean. Basically, so es que you got tres puntos. It's meaning you're going to fucking die, you're going to go to the hospital, or you're going to go to jail. So es que those are fucked up options, uh, if I do say so myself. Anyways, in that fashion, um, she already knew what time it was. But at the same time, she thought she could give up some information, wiggle, get up out of under this murder case, and just do it pushing. Um, so what happened was she gave up information on over 60 cases. Of course, they fact-checked it. They verified it. And most of what she's saying was true. And she gave up a lot of inner workings on the organization. you got to understand, this young girl had been part of the MS-13 movement for a lot of years, for a number of years. Now, you say to yourself, well, that's what she was only for. She got into when she was, what, about 12, 13 she only lived to 17, so that's four or five years. But in that four or five years, she's seen a lot more than the average person would see. Being with around gang leaders and being around prominent gangsters, um, she's seen a lot of treachery. She's seen a lot of death. She's seen a lot of murder. She's seen a lot of cases that not a lot of people were willing to speak on. Anyone that speaks about MS-13 or speaks on MS-13, man, that is not from there, Sasuke, they come up clipped. They come up short, off with their head. Machetes are used. That's how these bottles get down. So she already knew what was cracking. But she decided to do it anyway. So she gave up 60 cases. And of course, a lot of people were implicated in things. And things happened. What she didn't know was at the same time that she started to tell, her clica started to put their own ganga in their investigation. Meaning they were having an internal investigation because they knew there was a leak somewhere. Now, in most gangs, this is what happens. Vatos call a junta. They're like, Sasuke, I don't know. One of you, Sasuke, with the wind blowing. One of you putas is telling to what degree of telling? I can't call it like an alcoholic, but Sasuke telling is telling. But all I said was you took the Jolly Rancher. Cut that bottle. You, Sasuke, I don't like the way your whiskers, sta un raton. The whiskers are starting to curl. You you better watch it. Cut that shit. And you over there. Nah, not you, Piruha. You're, you're good for the one. You in the back. Yeah, come here. Come forward. Saz, that was the one, right? This is how they get down. They do internal investigations. They're trying to figure out within their hood, within their gang, who's telling because you got to understand, this organization is a criminal organization. It's an organization uh, compiled of a lot of uh, uh, riffraff and compiled of a lot of uh, loose cannons. About those that are really willing to go out there and get it, you know, in any way, in any way necessary. And I'm not here to disrespect MS-13. So I was going to respect to the body, respect to the gang. But at the same time, I will say this. Um, they're treacherous. They're very dangerous individuals that have been terrorizing the streets of El Salvador, Honduras, Central America, and now Los Angeles and the world, right? Um, by force. 
by force. Like I said, they're true believers in their cause. They're true believers that they are number one, and that's just the way it's going to go down, period. They want to be the biggest gang in the world. And they're pretty much there. You know, they're, they're everywhere, worldwide. Now, so they throw a junta at a hotel room, and they decide that for no other reason, man, Brenda pauses on their radar. She's on the radar because she knows a little too much. Of course, of course, her old man's pillow talking. At this time, she's not with that same individual. She's with another Vato, a gang leader within the hood. Um, and that's what happens, man. A lot of these women move from Vato to Vato, and they facilitate messages, and they facilitate what they need to to be a part of that clica. Now, she knew a little too much. And Sabasque, they knew this. But a lot of these guys looked at her as their homeboy, not their homegirl, their homeboy, because she always had it in. She was always down for whatever. She's always down to make moves uh, with thugs. She was always ready uh, to handle business, and they liked this about her. But at the same time, they didn't like the fact that there was a few, discrep few discrepancies in her story and her whereabouts on certain times. And Baltos are not dumb, man. If they see you acting funny, Sasuke, all of a sudden, if, if you're ordering fucking white cheese instead of yellow, something's crazy, right? So, no, Charlie, homes, Charlie, we don't eat burritos with lechuga in it. We don't eat burritos with lettuce. Sasuke, but she ordered one with lettuce. Two things. Either she's pregnant, which she was, or she's telling, right? Well, how do you base that off that? I don't know, Sasuke, um, rabbit, right? But yeah, but a rabbit's not a rat, but they're close. They're similar. They're both fucking, uh, they both have tails. No one has a cotton. The other one has a tail. Sasuke, you know what I mean, right? Anyways, somehow, some way, they were able to narrow it down to Brenda Paz, and they were conclusive with the fact that she told. So after throwing this junta in a hotel room, what they decided to do was hit her, okay? Now, anyone that knows about MS-13, they don't play, man. They're not going to DP you. They're not going to punch you up, touch you up. They're not going to knock you tooth out, man, because one, you know, so you can always get it fixed. They're, they're trying to do unfixable things to you. They're trying to cut you up with machetes. They're trying to take your head. They're trying to leave you in the dust. So what happened on July 13th, 2003, Brenda Paz at 17 years old was gruesomely and brutally murdered by her own friends and her own boyfriend. Okay, allegedly. So what happened was uh, she was invited to go fishing in Shenandoah River. Uh, I think it's Shenandoah, Shenandoah, Doya, however the fuck you say it, River in Virginia. Um, and she didn't even think twice. You know, she was four months pregnant. Nobody was uh, in the know about this. I don't even know if she knew. She might have. So I, was, I don't know. I can't call it. But at the same time, she was four months pregnant and they all decided to go out there. Now, there was three individuals that went there with her. Actually, four. One drove, three more. Um, they get there and they start to fish. Unbeknownst to them, it was a beautiful day. She didn't know what was going on. Um, she thought it was all good in the hood. She thought that nobody knew about her telling. Now, initially when she told, she did get put in the witness protection program for a time, but felt lonely. Um, you know, this gang was calling her. She wanted to go back and kick it with her homegirls and her homeboys. And she thought, hey, no one knew what I said. So I was scared, I'm going to be all right. Little did she know, unbeknownst to her, the bosses were like, oh, we've been searching. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah, bitch, we've been searching, right? So when she came back in the fall, she fell right into their hands, right into their palms. They felt that for no other reason, it was time to get machete with her, right? All right. So here they go fishing, and what happens is one of the guys is fishing, and when he looks back, he was a prime witness in the situation, he said that he seen one guy grab her, whereas the other one started to hit her several times, right? She was stabbed 13 times. Um, was it a coincidence she was stabbed 13 times? Charlie, there's a reasoning for that. You know, MS-13, 13, 13 says, you put it together. I'm saying allegedly. I'm not saying, but I'm saying though. Um, and then she was ha she had her throat cut, okay? Um, and this is how it goes. It was an unfortunate situation that these two guys killed her. Uh, one guy was a driver. Of course, another one witnessed it, took off running because he didn't want to be part of the situation. Um, eventually, Vatos did flip and start telling on each other. And that's what happens, you know, uh, when they're facing life without the possibility of parole. And they realize what they did. They regret it or some don't. Um, but in this situation, there was a lot of regret there. There was a lot of remorse. And of course, man, that didn't stop the judge from throwing the hammer down, uh, locking these guys up, deporting some. It's an ugly situation, but it happens. The reason why Brenda Paz's name is so prevalent and comes up when you're talking about MS-13 and hits that they've done is because she was such a young woman. She was such a young woman that was ingrained. Her whole life was ingrained. Now, things could have went differently for her, but she didn't want them to go. She loved the lifestyle. She loved Mi Vida Loca. She loved the gang. She loved MS-13, right? And for that, she suffered the final fate of death. And why? Because she couldn't get away from the gang. Now, I'm not advising people to go tell and so say, give up gang secrets. Nah, Charlie, that's neither here nor there. You don't have to do that in order to defect or in order to walk away. She was still young and had her life ahead of her. She was pregnant with some man's child. No one even knows, right? 
Um, she could have went and had her kid and, of course, moved on and did her own thing. But like I said, when she was in the witness protection program, she decided that for no other reason she should go back and kick it with these same homeboys and get caught up in the same mix. So does she deserve what she got? No. At the end of the day, nobody deserves a violent death like that. But at the same time, man, she knew what she signed up for and she found herself in that situation. She actually put herself back in that situation. Now you say to yourself, hey, you know, fuck it. She shouldn't have been telling on the homies. Yeah, you know, that's that's a fact. That's a fact. But nobody knows what led up to that. Nobody knows the reasoning behind it. Yeah, she wanted to evade a murder that she's seen. And maybe it scared her enough. And maybe this was the first murder she's seen where she was like, you know what? Mm -mm, no, hey, no, fuck this, right? I'm not cool with this. What I don't get, what's always boggled my mind and, and I questioned in this story about Brenda Paz was why did she go back? If she knew that these people were capable of doing murders, she knew what time it was. This wasn't her first fucking merry-go-round. Sasuke Tonto, mount up. You already know what's up. The Long Ranger, high ho silver, bitch. They already knew what it was. And she definitely knew what it was. So why did she go back? I'm going to tell you why she went back. She went back because that's all she knew. She considered this gang her familia. This is all she had. She didn't have nothing else. So when she was bored, of course, she started to get in communication back with the hood. And of course, oh yeah, Simon, the wind's blowing, girl, come on back. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. It's all good over here. It's like, let's go fishing. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know about you, but I don't know if I told on the whole world and the homeboy said, let's go fishing. Um, Charlie, right? I ain't trying to go, you, know, you ain't going to catfish me, right? Um, of course, I want to put myself in that situation uh, because I ain't doing all that. But no one knows what goes through a young woman's mind. Now, I say to myself, do young women need to be, and it definitely happens, you know? I just don't understand um, why she would put herself back in this situation. But you know, as a, as a young lady, like I said, she probably felt alone. Um, she probably regretted, you know, speaking on some of her friends, putting her friends in them sticky, icky situations. And it'd be like that sometimes. At the end of the day, man, it's very unfortunate. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tragedy that a young woman at 17 years old had to be, um, you know, killed. But that's part of the gang life. When you're involved in situations like that, especially when you're dealing with an organization that's as vicious as MS-13, she soon found out um, that she done fucked up, right? Oh, you know she done fucked up, right? And it's ugly. You know, never in her wildest dreams did she think her own friends uh, would do this to her. But it's usually the ones that are closest to you that are going to move on you. It's never the enemy guy. Now, of course, you can find yourself in a situation where you're going out there, yes, come on, this is boop, 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 and they bang on you and you get caught up. That's a victim of circumstances. That's gang warfare. That's guerrilla warfare. That's being out there in the streets handling your business. Um, but when it's your own homeboys that do it, your own homegirls that implicate you or, or set you up, man, it just seems worse and it's ugly. And I can only imagine what was going on in her mind as they were hitting her. You know, um, and I've heard that, you know, from what I've read, that she, the last thing she said, why, why? And they said, because you're a rat, bitch, right? Straight up, because you told. And that's a situation, man, that no one can prevent. You know, when she decided, when she made that decision to go work with the feds and implicate uh, these 60 cases and get people caught up, they're going to be mad. Now, of course, this gang decided unanimously that she had to go. And that's just the way it went down. Like I said, it's a very unfortunate but Brenda Paz, man, rest in peace. You know, she was four months pregnant. And this was found out after the fact. And I think that's what made it hit national news and made it just a little bit more heinous because a pregnant woman was hit in this fashion. And also because she had been working with the federal government or the cops prior, a year prior. Um, you know, she actually did a documentary. She actually did something where she told and they released that after. And for this, you know, she suffered the ultimate, the ultimate betrayal and the ultimate death. She did the ultimate betrayal and she got betrayed by her own friends. And it be like that sometimes, man. It's very unfortunate. Anyways, if you don't want to be Brenda Paz, Sasuke, don't tell. And number two, Sasuke, do your own thing, man. Especially if you're a young lady, man. If you're a beautiful young woman, man, be that and do your thing, man. It is what it is. You know, I'm not trying to stop or deter anyone from doing what they do at the end of the day. Sasuke, I was there. I've done that, so I already know. With that being said, I hope that you move fast with a purpose. I hope that you get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, at the end of the day, it's all about going out there and hustling for your familia. If you're a woman, Sasuke... Be aware, woman. Be aware, you know. Hey, there's a button right there, a bell. Hit that. Subscribe. Like. Please hit that thumbs up. It will help the channel a lot if you like this. If you don't, so I'm scared you can hit that thumbs down. Heavy as the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive to struggle for what I believe in. This is Gunner's Profiles. We're going to bring you the bangers every day because that's what I does. Bang, bang. The gun. Oh, but it's Brenda. Brenda had a baby, but Brenda barely had a brain.